come up for me is this idea of what happens when you decide to actually follow your dreams. You know, when you're in a family, if you're in a family of people that that's not the normality, but you decide like, hey, you know what, I've had enough, I've had enough of the, the nine to five grind, that's really not for me, I wanna make a change and I wanna make a break for it, and then you start to think like, oh, you know, all my friends and all my family, they're gonna be so stoked, I'm going after my dreams, I'm following my passion, I'm getting healthier, I'm super excited, they're gonna totally have my back. The reality is, is they actually are kind of like crabs in a bucket. Oftentimes is that when the one crab tries to get out of the bucket, the rest of the crabs are right there to pull it down. This is a really a human condition problem. It's a, some kind of spiritual crisis that a lot of people are, are under in our society. Because what it ends up doing is that it's nothing wrong with the person trying to get out of the bucket, or it's not it's not even anything wrong with the the people that are that are stuck in the ditch. What it is is that you start to become a mirror reflection of the inadequacies of those people that got used to you showing up a certain way because the way you showed up before validated their behavior, it validated their rituals, it validated their state in life. So they didn't have to change anything. But as soon as you make a change, automatically it causes a light to be shown on their shadows. Right? And that's a whole nother thing. Talking about like shadow work and getting real about what's going on with you. That's ultimately what ends up happening as you go through the, the kind of like the rungs on the ladder of this whole journey of self-discovery and personal transformation is that you go through all these layers and eventually you get to a place where you don't even need anything. You don't need anything from the exterior world. You don't need anything from anyone else. You don't need to be validated from other people because you realize that you are your own validation. Your reason for being is actually all the, the validation you need. And that's where, that's where ultimately it all leads. And then actually the people that, that our family, our friends, our associates, or whoever that we're wanting to help so much, because we all go through, it's, it's a natural progression of transformation that I've, I've kind of observed both in myself, but then I've observed in so many people that I talk to, that, that I coach, and, and just in general conversations, especially women, because women have that nurturing and that maternal, you know, that quality of like wanting everyone to, to kind of rise together and wanting community and, and all this kind of thing. <laughs> One thing I have to say to people, and I have to say it like very objectively, is like, look, you actually have to put the, the, um, the, what's it called when you're in the, the plane and the plane's going down. You have to put the mask on first before you put it on your child. Because you need to take care of you first. It's your life. Your life is what's important. Right? Because each person is actually 100% responsible for themselves. Right? And that's really key. So if you can take care of yourself and you can become the best version of you, then that's going to create a ripple effect that's going to actually reach the people that that's meant to reach. Right? Without you having to force the issue, you having to cause disruptions at the dinner table and, you know, and, and whatever the, whatever, whatever the, the thing is to get people's attention. It's like actually you just show up as you and then that, that speaks volumes, right? Yeah. It's like the old adage is, who you are speaks so loudly, I can't even hear a word you're saying. <laughs> That's really powerful right there. Who you are speaks so loudly, I can't even hear a word you're saying. Right? And that's why I stopped talking so much in my own personal life and getting these little conversations, the little whatever, a little trying to change other people and point fingers and all that stuff. And you like you're a vegetarian and you're a, a vegan and carnivore and frugivore and labeling people and saying no, this person needs to do this and trying to put people in boxes and titles and definitions. Like I don't have anything to do with any of that anymore because. Each person's on their own divine path. But, uh, but ultimately, what I found for myself is that my work is really sharing the magic of what uh, optimum lifestyle can be and what it can do for your life when you entertain the possibilities of letting go of the obstructions that we've been kind of programmed with 
from from our from this this kind of weird wacky world that we live in, right? So again, it's not about telling people they need to be a raw foodist, but I can say through my own experience that there's something there for everybody, you know. But but it's a riddle. It's a riddle. Like nutrition is a riddle. It's not. There's no rules, but there are tools. Right, that's how I like to think of it. Uh, there's no rules or guide, but look, I don't know. I mean, look, I wrote a book and people are like, oh, you got the answers. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I, I have a pretty good approximation of what I believe the optimum human diet could and probably should look like based on the evidence, but that only came from me standing on the shoulders of the giants that came before. Like, I'm in a very unique position to be where I'm at because of the people that came before. And then in the same thing, and them coming before the people that came before all the way down throughout history. So there's a there's a certain amount of humility that comes with sharing a message like this. And also the humility that comes sometimes by force, sometimes un uninvited when you're looking to transform your life. Sometimes there's a little bit of an ego involved when we're when we're looking to transform things in our life because we because it's the whole thing of like, well, I want to validate what I'm doing, so I need to change everything around me. You know, but now I go home and where I used to blame my mom or my grandmother for their own health issues and now I go back and I'm like, I really don't even care actually. It's like I care but I don't. Does that make sense? Like, I, I care in my heart because I love you all, and also the best thing I can do is just, you know, help help ease the tension, help ease the stress, help ease whatever thing is going on in the tension wave that's going on. Because ultimately, the number one cause of all physical problems, all tension, all constrictions, cardiovascular constrictions, all major hormone disruptions, um, environmentally issues aside is stress. That's the biggest thing in our world right now is stress. And people, we take for granted how stressed out we really are, right? Because people are in a hyper sympathetic state. So basically what that means is that you, you have different functions of your overall nervous system. You have an auto, autonomic nervous system, which is basically your automatic physical um, uh, behaviors like digestion, breathing, elimination, that kind of thing. The things that ha happen automatically, right? Well, what's interesting is that your autonomic nervous system can be impaired when you're in a hyper stressed out state. So a lot of people get into the health world, I see, and they're like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, they're like, hey, you know, I, I don't want to say anything, but I haven't had a bowel movement in like a day. Or two or like I'm you know I'm getting like my digestion is off like what's going on we go through the whole diet we go through every little thing the A, a to Z in the whole diet and then after we get out of it we realize like okay what's going on in your personal life what's your stress like because I found out that digestive issues and colon issues elimination issues problems where people can't eliminate properly a lot of times they're holding on to things in their life it shows up in the, these these autonomic functions. So there, so our natural, involuntary functions of the body just stop working, right? Stomach issues have a lot to do with stress. Have a lot to do with, you know, just like holding on to the past, holding on to too much mental chatter. The TV commercials, the beer commercials, the TV <laughs> dinners, the billboards, everything that's like playing on in people's head. That has a big effect on digestive issues, big time. And then you're, you know, like the, the massive epidemic of adrenal fatigue going on. And then we blame every little substance, like coffee, for example. Okay, it's coffee, it's all about coffee, that's the thing. It's like, well, why are people drinking?